and sit and sit and eat and eat. Had you affords this kindness, son Petruchio, had you affords nothing but what is kind. For both our sakes, I would that word were true. If faith, Hortensio feels the fear of his widow. I am not afeard. I mean, Hortensio is afeard of you. Your husband being troubled with a shrew measures my husband's trouble by his own. And now you know my meaning. A very mean meaning. Right, I mean you. To her, Kate. To her, widow. A hundred crowns, my Kate will lay her flat. That's my office. <laughs> <laughs> By your leave, my lords, the ladies would withdraw. Bianca? Marry Petruchio, I begin to wonder if Alice went to bury his true home. I say no. And therefore, for assurance, let's each one send unto his wife. And he whose wife is most obedient to come the moment he hath sent for her shall win the wager which we will propose. Content. <laughs> what was the wager? Two hundred crowns. Two hundred crowns? I'll venture so much on my hawk and hound, but twenty times so much upon my wife. So be it then. Four thousand crowns. Oh. Oh. Content. Content. Who shall begin? Uh, that will I. Biandello. Go, Biandello. Bid your mistress come to me. I will share half your stake, Bianca comes. I'll have no halves. I'll bear it all myself. Oh. Anna, what news? Sir, my mistress sends you word that she's busy and she cannot come. <laughs> She is busy and she cannot come. Is that an answer? Aye, and a kind one, too. Pray God, sir, your wife send you not a worse. I hope for better. <laughs> sir, sit up. Biondello, go and entreat my wife to come to me forthwith. Oh, entreat her. Hey, then she needs must come. I'm afraid, sir, do what you can. Yours will not be entreated. <laughs> <laughs> Where is my wife? She will not come. She bids you come to her. <laughs> worse, worse, she will not come. Oh, fie, intolerable, not to be endured. Grumio, go to thy mistress. Say I command her to come to me. I know her answer. What? She will not come. <laughs> Unknit that threatening, unkind brow, and dart not scornful glances from those eyes to wound thy lord, thy king, thy governor. It bluts thy beauty, as frost to bite the meads. Thy husband is thy lord, thy life, thy keeper, thy head, thy sovereign, one that cares for thee, and for thy maintenance commits his body to painful labor, both by sea and land. To watch the night in storms, the day in cold, while thou liest warm at home, secure and safe. He craves no other tribute at thy hands but love, fair looks, and true obedience. Too little payment for so great a debt. Such duty the subject owes the prince. Even such a woman oweth to her husband. And when she is froward, Peevish, sullen, sour, and not obedient to his honest will. What is she but a foul, contending rebel and graceless traitor to her loving lord? I am ashamed that women are so simple to offer war when they should kneel for peace or seek for rule, supremacy, and sway when they are bound to serve, love, and obey. Why? Are our bodies soft and weak and smooth, unapt to toil and trouble in the world, but that our soft conditions and our hearts 
should well agree with our external parts. Come, throwing up able worms. Come, my mind has been as big as one of yours. My heart is great, my reason happy more to bandy word for word and frown for frown. But now I see our lances are but straws. Mm -hmm. Come on and kiss me, Kate.